Make it morning or something. Morning or something. It's, this is stage change, so this is where we, uh, all the work that we put in to craft this together is going to pay off now. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's a joy to be here on this very special day as we come together really to, to make that final commitment to this vision that God has cast for this new building that will be such a welcoming space for our children and allows us to make a better, bigger, better space for our Cades community. And, and we're just so happy uh, that, that God has has extended that vision to us. And, and what a joy for me to turn right out of my driveway today instead of left to go to a different church, to be able to turn right and to come here and, and, and be in this familiar place and see familiar faces and also new faces. Um, so it's, it's just a joy to be here. You're in for a treat. We have more uh, angels that are going to sing. You didn't know angels were going to sing this morning, but they are. We have more angels that are going to sing, and I think they're about to sing right now.
Will you help me welcome Middle School of the Rock here to, to lead us in worship today? Listen, y'all worked hard on that song. Sit down, rest, rest. Y'all are good. After all that food and everything. Hey, this is, uh, we're going to do one more song. This is a great song. And listen, this is one of those songs everybody goes, oh, I know this. And they start, sing along at the end. You can stand up and holler and do what you want. This is Rescue. Thank you for joining us for worship today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, please text WELCOME to 865-302-3616. Advent activities start this week, so mark your calendars. Looking for a group to connect with this Advent? We have two Advent studies. One that meets on Sundays during the Sunday school hour, and one that meets on Wednesday at 11 a.m. For more information, visit concordunited.org slash Christmas. Join us for the Christmas cantata, The Word Became Flesh, by Dan Geller, presented by the Concord Musical Groups on December 3rd at 6 p.m. 
On your way into worship, you should have received a list of upcoming Advent activities. For a full list of Advent and Christmas activities, visit concordunited.org slash Christmas. And don't forget to invite your friends. Thanks for joining us in worship. We hope you take these opportunities to share Christ, serve others, and grow in faith. Well, good morning. You know, I said this in the first service, and I'm going to say it again. I feel so blessed to be here this morning. Do you guys not feel blessed to be here this morning? I mean, it's amazing. Yes. Give those kids a round of applause. And I don't know if you heard earlier or not, but Haley, who um, leads all of our children's music ministry, and she's wonderful. She's not here this morning. So these kids did this pretty much on their own with the help of a few parents that came in. So thank you for filling in. Um, We've got... uh, a lot happening this morning. We have a guest pastor. We're thankful for him this morning. What a wonderful way to lead into a week that is all about being focused on what we are thankful for. We have so much to be thankful for just this morning. So what a great start to that. Whether you are here with us in the building or you have joined us online, we are very thankful that you chose to worship with us this morning. This happens to be your first time visiting with us. We ask that you please text WELCOME to 865-302-3616. This is just a way that you can reach out to us. We can answer any questions that you may have, and we can tell you a little bit about all of the things that we have going on here at Concord. This happens to be your first time here. We would also love for you to stop by the information desk right outside of these doors, pick up a gift from us. And also, if you happened to order centerpieces or wreaths to support our preschool, you can pick those up at the Welcome Center as well. There are people there that will distribute those to you. So make sure that you do that. When you came in, you were handed a connection card. We ask that you please fill out the front of those cards. Um, That just gives us kind of a record of your attendance this morning and encourage you to fill out the back. The back of those cards are for prayer requests and praises. And as a community of faith, one of the ways that we can support each other is to be prayerful for each of you as you go throughout your week. So please take advantage of that and fill those out on the back. So we heard from lots of kids this morning, singing, beautiful voices, leading us in worship. We have a few people that would like to share with us about our children's ministry department and what that means to them. So let's take a look. We are excited to share with you what God is doing in the lives of children here at Concord United. We believe that children are important members of the family of God and want to encourage them to know, love, and serve Jesus with all their hearts. In the children's ministry, we provide a variety of opportunities for your child to get involved with others as they enter the early years of their own spiritual journey. As they begin their personal relationship with Jesus, we encourage them through creative arts, small groups, and fellowship with others. We believe it is important to equip parents with the tools to help their family's faith thrive. We are here to partner with you on their journey to share Christ, serve others, and grow in faith. All of our teachers just do such a good job of knowing every kid by their name, greeting them every time they come in, making sure they feel welcomed and a part of our church, which I think is so important as a young kid to feel like they are a member of the church from the very beginning. What I love about this church is how Miss Haley has the musicals that like any of the children are allowed to join. Um, and um, I love how like everyone in this church has a part of the church and like they do that part well. My favorite thing here was the mission project where we made dog toys for the animal shelter. My favorite thing here at church is when we bless the dogs. About we winning and like worshiping and kids worship. My favorite thing about the children's ministry here is the Tween Ages program because you get to do a bunch of fun projects and make a lot of new friends. tell from that video, our children's ministry is alive and it is booming. We always have things going on with our children. And what I love about that is that some of those children referenced other ministries within our church that bless them within the children's ministry. So we are just so grateful for all of the ministries here. If you would like to support those ministries, there are four ways that you can do that. You can do that via text, in the mail. Um, You can do it 
in person just by dropping those in the boxes as you exit the worship center. And I left one out and I can't remember which one I left out. Text it online. Thank you. Thank you. Online. Or you can give online. Um, So we're so grateful for you this morning. And as we continue to worship together, let's go to God in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and gratefulness just fills our hearts from the smiles on the faces to the voices. Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to be in this place, to experience the things that are happening in this room. We ask that you be with Pastor Larry as he um, shares your word with us. May it lead us into the week with thankful hearts. We thank you for all of your many blessings, Lord. In your precious name we pray, amen. It's a song about trust. It's kind of what this morning is all about. Well, I've been turned round, but I've never been lost. Seen the water get troubled, but we walked across. When my knees were shaking, you held my hand. Turning my problems into promised land. We shepherd.
this feels familiar. <laughs> this is so much fun. It's so much fun. To, oh, listen. I, uh, I was so thrilled that Will uh, asked me to come back. It, this, this really has, during the, during the part in between the press service, I was supposed to mention that we really have been working on this for about 20 years. I mean, this, we started in about 2003, I think, when we started the, the, the dream for this building, and then there was always a plan for two, for a children's building to be connected to it. So it has, it's been a long time, and, and I appreciate Will letting me come back and, and just kind of be a part of this. Of, of this next phase of it for today. So thank you for that. And, and to, to get started today, I'm going to take a risk because I want to talk about vision and I want to talk about letting go and I want to talk about trust and I want to talk about living in a way uh, where you don't feel quite so sure that you know everything that you're seeing is true and actually happening in front of you. And, and, I, and I, to, to begin that, I want to start by saying there are basically two kinds of people in the world. There are Disney people. And there are Disney people who are the kind of people, and Lynn and I, Lynn is my wife, for those who, who don't know, Lynn is my wife, and she's here somewhere, I think. Um, Disney people are the kind of people that are already getting misty-eyed, just getting off the train that goes from the gate area over to the terminal at Orlando International Airport. Already getting misty-eyed, already looking, is Mickey here? No, no, he's at, he's at Disney World. You're at the airport. Uh, and and the, that's, that's that one kind of Disney person. Lynn and I, are, are in that group. And then the other kind of people are the people who would rather prep for a colonoscopy <laughs> than to don a pair of Mickey ears and ride It's a Small World, even one time, even if it's a hot day and it's cool in there and hot everywhere else. That's, that's how it breaks down. We're certainly in that first category. And we were just at Walt Disney World. Well, it's probably why it's on my mind. We were there back in September for our 45th wedding anniversary. And that's always been a special place for us because we were there on our honeymoon uh, 45 years before that. Um, uh, actually, actually, yeah, 40, yeah, 45 years before that. And it was only the Magic Kingdom. That's all that was there. And uh, we stopped there on our way. We had gone to Key West and we're coming back up and stopped at Walt Disney World. So we've always been a Disney family. We love it. Our kids love Disney. And, and you know, this time when we were down there, I was trying to think about why that is. Uh, because Disney, it's, it's a little expensive, but really it's, it's not that much more. If you play it right, it's not that bad. If you stay at the Grand Floridian and pay 700 bucks a night for a room, yeah, it's, it's kind of pricey. But if you're like us and you stay at a value hotel and get discounts on all your tickets, it's not so bad. But there's something about Disney that's otherworldly and immersive, and it just takes you away. And you get to suspend reality while you're there. And I also understand that there are people these days that just don't like Disney because they think they're too political and all that. So, so if that's getting your heart rate up a little bit this morning, just let it go. Just let it go. Be like Elsa, you know, because we, we, I don't go there for a political rally. I go there because Mickey Mouse lives at Walt Disney World. And, and this is the cool thing. That's, that's one of the coolest things, I think, are those characters. Because if you're a Disney person, there's not like a cast member. And of course, Disney employees are cast members. They're not employees. They're cast members. And by the way, did you know that if you go to Disney, I've probably mentioned this before, if you go to Walt Disney World and ask them, where's the bathroom? They will never go like that because that's threatening. It goes all the way back to Walt Disney. If you ask them where the bathroom is, they'll go, it's over there. Two fingers. I had one person tell me it's because Walt smoked, and that kind of spoils the magic of it all. <laughs> but but it's, it's, it's always like that, you know. It's just, and, and, and there, there's not a cast member in a suit. No, no, you know, it's, it's Mickey Mouse. And I, and I love, the thing I love about the Disney characters is that they're so real. Yeah, it's a mouse and, it's, and they're dogs and they're other animals uh, or princes and princesses. But, but they're real people and they're mischievous. Mickey is mischievous. He gets in trouble in the first big blockbuster movie, Fantasia. You know, he gets in trouble. He does stuff he shouldn't have done and he gets in trouble for it. But he's courageous and he always tries to do the right thing and stand for what's right and, and help people that don't, have as much power as him or maybe. Uh, and, and, and I just love that. So when you see them, if you're a Disney person and, and you just suspend reality as soon as you step on park and you see them and your heart rate picks up and it's like, there, 
there, there he is. Whether it's Mickey or Minnie or Goofy or Donald, or whoever it may happen to be. Lynn and I were there on the trip we made up in 2019, which was four years ago for our 41st anniversary. They give you these pins if you let them know it's your anniversary. And it, it, uh, and it says happily ever after and how many years you've been married. So Lynn and I were... We're going to Epcot that day and we'd ridden the, the, the Skyliner thing, which is really cool And it comes in to Epcot at the top if you know Epcot It's up there at the top of the waters of the world right next to where the France pavilion is And so we had just walked through the turnstiles and there was Mickey was coming out with a handle They always have a handler there with them and they were going to set up a receiving line to get your picture made And there was nobody it was just the timing was perfect. So we went over there. We were like kids again Which is the whole idea? We we were like kids again and we were you know we we stood together and I was motioning for Mickey and he was going to come over and Mickey goes he they don't talk but he goes and he comes over to Lynn and me and he and he, he stands like this and he he keeps going closer closer and he gets us standing together like that we we're actually going to try to get him in between us and he's like no 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 closer closer and then he actually says look he's pointing you know, look at each other and he kept poisoning for us to get closer and closer and closer to each other. And before we knew it, this is the picture that came from that. <laughs> and it's, it's Mickey looking creeped out because we were kissing. <laughs> But Mickey did that on purpose because that's what, that's Mickey. Mickey's mischievous. And you, if you're willing to enter that reality, it's just a lot of fun. And by the way, by the way, there are other characters there too, not quite as charming as Mickey. But if, if you think that, oh, come on, that's just people wearing uniforms, you find Lynn after the service and, and you tell Lynn that Chewbacca is not real. <laughs> Lynn was like, I mean, Chewbacca was like in her face posing for this picture. And she kept going, don't leave, don't leave, I don't have it yet, don't have it yet. So he was a, he was a good sport. But anyway, we, we're all in as Disney people and we love the characters and we love the whole idea about this, this thing just being immersive. And there's a reason why they do that. There's a word that they use. And let me, let me, uh, let me read this. There's a, Jennifer Lee is the chief of the animation department for Walt Disney World. Actually, it's for all of Disney. She's head of animation. And she said this. I, I saw this a while back. And sometimes you read a quote and you think, I can use that. And sure enough, this was awesome. She said, Walt would always say to connect with the kid in us. But I think some people misinterpret that concept uh, to just toys and innocence that is naive. And he said, I don't think that's what, and she said, I don't think that's what it means. I think that what he means connect with that part of ourselves that is wondrous. Connect with the part of, of children of all ages, you know, whether they're one or 101 or any point in between, connect with that part that is wondrous. And I love this. That sees possibility, that doesn't give up, that has a way of looking at the world and seeing the world for its best. And all of those things that we should always revisit over and over again. And that's that's why I love Disney, and that's why I get caught up in it, and I'm unashamed about that. You get caught up in the wonder of it all, and that's a wonderful word. And I have a friend that I went to a seminary with who serves in Nashville, and he has a blog, and it's called Wonder Only Wonder Understands. And he got that quote from Gregory of Nyssa, and we're not going to go into some lecture about the early church but there were lots of these early church fathers and mothers the great thinkers and theologians and movers and shakers that helped get the church to where it is today and Gregory of Nyssa Nyssa was in Turkey it's the area is still there uh, and this was about 380 or something AD and Gregory of Nyssa was one of the ones who was helping to refine this idea of the Holy Trinity Father Son Holy Spirit that was that's not in the Bible anywhere I mean it is Father, Son, Holy Spirit are all over the Bible, but it, that word's not there. So he was one of the ones, he was a visionary, and he was one of these that was willing to let go of all this stuff that you can explain so that he could apprehend the stuff that isn't quite so easily explained. And his quote actually is this, concepts create idols, only wonder comprehends anything. 
And he went on to say, actually, people kill one another over idols. Wonder makes us fall to our knees. And I, I love that. And that's why I'm just kind of going to park on that word for a minute this morning because wonder, that's, that's the way kids live their lives. They live with this, this unlimited, unabashed wonder for the world around them. Charles Wesley, the brother of John Wesley, and the two of them started the movement that is the United Methodist Church that we're a part of today. He has a hymn, one of his great hymns that he wrote, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. And toward the end of the last verse of that hymn, it says, changed from glory into glory till with thee we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. And it's all through the scripture. They use words like awesome and uh, to talk about the presence of God and that which is unexplainable. So, so I want to park on that for a minute this morning and talk about how it is that we are able to experience and be a part of, like children, these things around us that aren't so easily explained, but yet can be, become such a huge part of our lives and can inform us and make us better people. So let me read two passages of Scripture, both from Matthew. Um, the first one is uh, from chapter 18, verses 1 through 5. Jesus, as usual, is having a problem with his disciples. And there they were all about who is the one, Jesus? Who, come on, come on. It's me, isn't it? I know it is, Jesus. I know I'm your favorite. I see the way you look at me. I see the extra jobs you give me. I'm going to get the corner office right. I'm going to get the company BMW. You know, there are going to be fresh roses in my office every morning. I just know it. And so the passage says, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest? It's, it's like, guys, have you not been listening to anything he said? He says, who, they said, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly I tell you, unless you change, implying that they've got a ways to go yet, unless you change your thinking and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, Whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name, this is where we start thinking about our children's ministry, whoever welcomes one child in my name welcomes me. Then just a little bit further, Matthew 19, there's this beautiful passage uh, that we talk about when we do infant baptism. Uh, Jesus was traveling through a village and it said, then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and to pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. They still weren't listening. Jesus said, let the little children come to me, you knuckleheads. Actually, that's not in there. He said, Jesus, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And when he placed his hands on them, he went on to another place. Now, I understand there's a possibility for disconnect because children can also be a little bit irresponsible, and perhaps a little unpredictable, and maybe even downright ornery every now and then can get an amen from anybody that's got a toddler. I mean, we know that's true. It's not all unicorns and rainbows for children. Um, and, and if you don't understand that, then you've never seen a cherry popsicle melting on a brand new couch because the toddler that was holding it was interested in laying down and sleep, taking a nap with the cat. And so or, or, or having a meltdown because their sock is not pos perfectly positioned around their precious little foot in their shoe. And for I remember once one of my, our little daughters, it was Christy, our younger, my sock is bumpy, my sock is bumpy. I mean, you know, and that was the end of the world. And then the best one, this was I'm going to tell on both of my girls, uh, Lauren and Christy, they were little at the time. We had a minivan and one was on one side of the seat and one was on the other. And they were really good, but you know, they had their moments. And my favorite moment was whenever Christy screamed at the top of her lungs, Mommy, Lauren's looking out my window. <laughs> okay, it's probably not the end of the world. But so, so when everything isn't perfect with children. But, but what Walt said and what Jesus said is not be like children, be 
Christ, don't be, he said, be childlike. Don't act like children, but be childlike. What does that mean? Childlike, it means to, well, let's talk about what that means. I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about that for a minute. What does it mean to be childlike? Well, let's start. Let's use the word wonder for a minute. Wonder. You know, those disciples were lost in wonder with Jesus because he kept saying, he came, Jesus came into a world where there were a few haves, a lot of have-nots, and there was no connection between the two. Children, unmarried women, and most older people, maybe older men is an exception, but older women in particular had no status. They had no status in the community. They had no power. They had no standing. Children particularly had none. And so what Jesus came in to say was, okay, but whoever is, you think is the last, they're the first in the kingdom. Whoever's the first in the kingdom, the ones that have all the power and the ones that have all the money and the ones that think they know the law better than everybody else and strut around like roosters making everybody feel bad because they don't have everything memorized, they're going to be the least. And they wondered about that. And that's exactly what Jesus wanted them to do. Every time he did those things, he wanted them to wonder. That's why, that's why he did these miracles. Yes, he helped people when he healed blind eyes and healed lame legs. Yeah, he helped people, but he was also inciting this idea of wonder at the kingdom. Oh my gosh, Things can happen in the kingdom that you can't explain, and yet they happen. How many of them, how many of them still remember that buffet out in the field that was from some little boy's lunch? And 5,000 of them had this incredible, this incredible bread and fish buffet. Some of them were there probably and remembered that. How do you explain that? You don't. You wonder over it. Wonder is an invitation to experience mystery, not explain it. If we spend all our time trying to explain the mystery, we miss it. And we don't have to explain it for the mystery to empower us and inform us and nurture us and build us into what Christ wants us to be. So there's wonder. And then I think another another word that comes to mind when we think about being childlike is openness. Children, until we teach them differently, and we do, God bless us as parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and all, everybody who has influence. Children are open until we teach them not to be. They're open to new ideas. They're open to anything. I don't know. Lynn, my wife is from Rhode Island, and we used to go up there on vacation every summer. And we were up there once, and Christy, when she was teeny, she was not walking yet. We were having dinner, and, and one of the delicacies up there are steamers. And if anybody's ever had one, you, if you know, you know. And if you don't, steamers are, 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 look like something that should be flushed down the toilet, quite frankly. <laughs> they're, they're these little clams, and you steam them, and they have these ugly little necks that stick up that have a membrane you have to peel off after you've steamed them. And then you hold them up and they're just, their little digestive tract is hanging there. <laughs> but let me tell you, you run that through some melted butter, huh, it's un, they're unbelievable. But you have to get past, you have to get past that cognitive dissonance of, I'm not eating that, there's no way, and, you know, and that's good, don't eat them. That just leaves more for us when we go up there. And some of the grown-ups that come to her parents' house would not eat them. They had a bed and breakfast. But Christy didn't know any better. We were eating them. And so at one, I don't know, one year's old, maybe she wasn't even a year yet. She was, I mean, she, she would pop and Lynn would put one in her mouth and she would grin. And it's just, it's mushy in your mouth and she loved it. She was just open to it. Y'all are eating it. I'll eat it. Oh, wow, this is good. And that's, that's this kind of openness. And, and even more important is that we open ourselves to not only new experiences, but new people and new ideas. If we never open ourselves up to a new idea, then we're always going to be the smartest person we know. And I don't ever want to be the smartest person I know. Because that means that circle is way too small and there's a whole lot of stuff I need to learn. But we do that. We close ourselves off. And sometimes it's because we want to be protective and we want to be a part of the club. We do this with politics. To, to talk about politics for a minute, I'm not going to be political. But, you know, the, the, the Republicans, they don't think the Democrats know anything. I mean, like nothing. And Democrats don't think Republicans know anything at all. And so the assumption is if you're wrong about this one thing, then you're wrong about everything. 
And I don't want anything to do with you. And the fact is, that's usually not the case. But, but, but openness, I'll say it this way. Openness provides a doorway to possibilities that can expand the kingdom if we're willing to open our mind to new possibilities. So there's wonder and there's openness. And there's one other thing that you notice in children and that is that they are welcoming. And that's kind of in the same idea as openness, but particularly about people. They are welcoming. When Lauren, my, our older daughter, was little, she was maybe two. She was walking good and she could talk. And she was probably two or so. And we lived in Strawberry Plains at the time and she needed to have a, a, a shot. So we had gone down to the, the health department had an outpost on Magnolia Avenue. So we, we drove there, it was closer for us. So we went there and we were waiting. They had toys for the kids and families were coming in and there were two or three African-American families that came in. And I don't think Lauren really had, had been around many African-Americans. And so this little guy that was just about her age uh, walked up to her because she had the toys. And he walked up to her and Lauren was standing there and they walked up to each other and they were standing that close to each other and clearly just looking at each other, you know, thinking, huh, well, you're different. And then Lauren in the most, and I will, this will be forever etched in my memory, she just reached up and touched his hair. Your hair is different from mine. And she kind of felt of it. And he smiled and she smiled and they went off and played with the toys. That was, that was the invitation. I like you. You want to play with toys with me? They're welcoming until you teach them. Now, it's not to say that we don't need to teach our children to be careful. And there are certain situations where you have to teach them to be careful. Not about people or people who are different from them. We could do a lot better job of, of trying to uh, minimize the differences instead of maximize them. Children are naturally welcoming. And I want to say this, to welcome someone into our presence may be the most Christ-like thing we can do. For you to welcome someone into your presence who's very different from you for any number of reasons, to do that is most likely the most Christ-like thing you can do. Because he invited some strange people into his presence. I'm one of them. He invited me and welcomed me whenever I would have been holding me in suspicion. But he didn't. And he didn't you either. So just, just to kind of wrap it up. This is, this, is how, this is how the church, this is how this church, I believe, sees the world and, and, and projects the kingdom of God. We do it with wonder. This church has always wondered and always been lost in wonder about what possibilities are. I wonder, wonder, wonder if we could start a church at the end of the Civil War with, with three couples uh, in a, in a, by the river where there aren't that many people living. Well, yeah, that'd be a good place to start a church wonder but we could do that because they saw a vision and then there was wonder that started this cage program and wonder that started our preschool and does all these wonder missional missional things it's and and that pl plays right into openness wonder and openness no we've never done that before that can be the seven last words of the church we've never done it that way before but in this church it's like let's try it we've never done that let's try that imagine what could happen and so we have this openness which is childlike and then we strategize a little bit and figure out a way to make something wonderful out of it like a place to take care of people dealing with dementia or to take care of kids or to drop 40,000 pounds of vegetables in the parking lot boy that sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Yes, it is, but not on the front end, not the first time. There's wonder, there's openness, and then there's welcoming. And this church is, in fact, welcoming. And I'm so proud of that as much or more than anything about this church is that we are wonder, openness, welcoming. Wow. That's what we're supposed to say. That's what children say when they're faced with something they don't understand. Wow. Sometimes grown-ups, our first word is, wait, wait, I don't understand it. Whoa, 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 how are we going to pay for that? Whoa, whoa, now, now, who's going to run this thing? And how, how far are we going to go into this? And I don't know, let's wait, let's wait. 
kids go, wow, imagine that. And I've got a minute. We don't, we're not up against a hard stop today. If we, it's okay if we run over a couple of minutes, isn't it? The Baptists won't eat all the food. They'll, they'll still be some. Of the, it's okay. I wasn't going to tell this story because I've, to, I've told it here probably once or twice in the 22 years that I've been here. But I just have to. I just feel compelled because this is such a great illustration. So forgive me if you heard me tell the story before. One final Disney story when Lauren was five. And we were, we, I was in the radio business and we were doing a promotion for the opening of Typhoon Lagoon, which is one of their water parks. And uh, Lauren could go with us. And so Lauren went down there with us. And I said, Lauren, we're going to go to Walt Disney World and meet Mickey Mouse. And she said, Daddy, Mickey Mouse is a cartoon character. That's a costume. I said, no, honey, I've been down there. I've seen him. No, Daddy, Mickey Mouse is a cartoon character. Okay, but we're going. So we went down there. And um, they had a big press party the night before Typhoon Lagoon opened. So we went to the press party. And we walked in the main gate. And there, standing in the main gate, was Mickey Mouse. And so Lynn and I just stepped back and let Lauren kind of walk up as close as she dared to get. And she stopped. And she looked at him. And she turned around to us and said, it's him. (laughs) I know, honey. I know. Wonder. She was suddenly, all the details, all the math, all the logic, gone. She was in his presence. She saw him in person and was lost in wonder. That's what happens when we meet Jesus. When we sense the presence of Jesus in front of us, then suddenly we don't have to worry so much about the math, about all the calculations, about all the descriptions, about all the evaluation. Oh, strategy's important. But at some point, you just have to be in the presence of Jesus and go, wow, it's him. That's how I hope we approach this 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 building campaign that we are consecrating today and moving in. We've, we've gotten a, a lot. I think we're very near $2 million of the $3 million that we need. And now we need everyone to step up. I've made my, Lynn and I have made our commitment some time ago before we left here. We made our commitment. And you'll have an opportunity today. We have some commitment cards around if you want to bring one, but, but you don't have to. Today, you can do it online. There's a QR code right there. You can catch it with your phone, and it will give you all the information you need to make a commitment online. Let me tell you, this works when everybody gets involved. This is not for rich people. This is not for poor people. This is not for people with children, people with grandchildren. It has nothing to do with this. This is about... A church seeking to follow Jesus, capturing a vision, and trying to advance it for the good of the kingdom and this community. And everyone gets, not must, everyone gets to be a part of it. So we're going to sing a song to close. And... um, I urge you to sing with us. But as we do, if you, if you have a card, if you've got one of those cards, you can fill it out. You can bring it up here and just drop it off at the front of the stage. But, but you can also do it online. Either way, the point is to get everybody involved. Sing with us. you. 
Amen.